Hello everyone. So for today's video, I thought that I would show you how to make a dish that we call chili spaghetti. It is basically spaghetti, but instead of spaghetti sauce, you use chili. And it is absolutely delicious. And let's get started, because I'm hungry. So the first thing you need to do is chop up some onions. And I'm going to be making a large batch of this because I'm going to be feeding a group of people. So I'm basically tripling the recipe. So let's get started here. And these are sweet onions, like Vidalia, would be a good type of onion to use for this. And this is a recipe that is fairly famous in our family. So we've tried many different variations of it and this seems to be the best one. And I am not an expert chopper by any means, so if I were a real chef, this would only take a fraction of the time, but I am not a real chef. So this knife has these little indentions in it that are supposed to keep the fruit or the vegetables from sticking to it, but that's not working. And I will try to not cut my fingers. So I have a bowl here. You can barely see it on the screen. I'm going to transfer these onions to the bowl. I think I should have used a larger chopping board. It's OK, though. I'm going to also try not to cry with these onions. Although I have my contacts in, and sometimes that seems to kind of protect your eyes. Sometimes. Although I can already start to feel it. Since we are tripling this recipe, we need to cut up three onions, so this will be the second one. So we are getting the most complicated part of this recipe out of the way at the beginning. Okay, one more to go. Oh, the onions are picking my nose around. They are definitely potent. I 
And we're going to be cooking these onions till they're soft, so even if they're in kind of big chunks, they will basically end up dissolving into the chili. Okay, so our three onions are chopped and ready to be put in the skillet. Okay, so here's our skillet and we need to cook some onions. So we are going to start with just a little bit of butter for some moisture. Help them cook down some. Looking for there we go. A wooden spoon. Let's put our onions in. And yes, I am feeding a lot of people, so that's why there is so much in mean, the quantity of things. We're just going to mix that butter in very gradually. Now that it heats up. Turn the heat up just a little bit. We have it on medium. And what we're going to do is cook those slowly. And once they start to kind of sizzle a little bit, we're going to put a cover on them and just sweat them down and get them really soft. So I turn the heat up initially to kind of get things started and then I'll turn the heat back down again.
Okay, so these sound like they're sizzling right along. So we're going to cover them. I'm going to turn the heat down to about four and just let them simmer and slowly cook. Okay, so these have been cooking for a few minutes. So let's check and see what they look like. They're coming along. They're starting to get a little translucent and that's what we want to soften them up. And the smell of the butter and the onions is always nice. So we'll see what they look like in another few minutes. Okay, let's check on them now and see They've been cooking for probably about three, four minutes. You can see they're definitely much softer than when we first started. And these look good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cover off and let them cook for a little longer and let the onions brown. going to turn up the heat a bit, a little bit past medium, and browning them will just give it a little bit more flavor. And browned onions are pretty much good in anything, so. I always like the sound of things cooking and bubbling. Get in there slowly, which is good because you don't want to burn them, you just want to brown them a little bit.
Okay, we're almost there. It definitely smells like grilled onions now, or brown onions. I think we'll just let it do it one more time. And we'll be ready. Okay, well these are definitely a little brown. That's exactly what we want. So now we're going to transfer these into the pot that we're going to cook our chili in. Okay, so we've transferred the onions into the pot, which you'll see a little later. And now the next thing we need to cook is the meat for our chili. So a regular portion would be, three, uh, would be one pound, but because we are tripling the recipe, we have three pounds here. Okay, so I turned the um, heat down on that to low just to get this new batch of meat started so I didn't burn it. So now it's kind of settled down. And this is just ground chuck. Um, we actually tried this recipe one time with a higher grade of hamburger and it just didn't taste the same. So I think the percentage of fat to meat is um, just about right with the ground chuck. So you don't need to go get a expensive cut of meat or expensive cut of hamburger, I guess, for this. So I'm gonna turn the heat back up so we can slowly brown this hamburger instead of burn it. And we're using the same skillet we cooked the onions in, and that kind of helps get a little bit more flavor into the onion, into the meat, and it also kind of deglazes the pan and gets off the burnt onion which is always nice. Well, this is a lot of hamburger to cook, so I'm going to just let it do its thing, and then we'll come back when it's just about ready, okay? Okay, so while our meat is cooking, and you can probably hear it going over there, we have quite a few cans that we need to open up that we are going to add, and it's going to provide the um, the liquids and most of the flavor for our chili. So what we have is, and remember that this is a triple recipe, so we have six cans of tomato paste, just regular flavor tomato paste. Um, if you were just making a single of this recipe, you'd only need two cans. We have three cans of tomato soup, and we have three cans of chili beans. So right now I'm just gonna open these up so that they are ready to go when the meat is done.
Okay, so those are ready. I'll set those to the side. And we'll start on the chili beans. And these are just um, medium spicy chili beans. do the tomato paste tomato sauce sorry not tomato paste tomato sauce and the goal with cooking the meat down is to cook it so that it is pretty much dry. You want to cook most of the moisture out of the meat. Kind of reducing and condensing the flavors of the meat. So you're not pouring that down the drain when you drain off your meat so well all the cans are open and we will continue to let the meat cook and I will be right back okay so here we have our meat that's cooked down and I broke up the chunks down into smaller little pieces of the meat and most of the moisture is cooked out and the meat is going to start to brown kind of like the onions did so we want to brown just a little bit and then we're going to transfer it into the pot with the onions. Slightly different sound of a pan of meat sizzling than a pan of onions sizzling. The onions were much louder when they were just kind of sitting there. The meat is much quieter, but then when you start stirring it up, it gets very loud. And this is on medium heat, just a uh, setting number five on my stove here for this burner. And I think this is about done. I don't want it to burn or stick too badly to the pan. So 
So I'm going to transfer this to the pot and then we will move on to the next step. Okay, so here's our saucepan and you can see we have the meat and the onions that have been added to it. And I am now adding in the various ingredients from the cans that we opened. So I just um, added the tomato sauce. So I will now add the tomato soup. And this is a nine quart saucepan that I bought specifically for this because we didn't have anything that was big enough to hold this quantity. So we have gotten a new saucepan out of the deal, which is always nice. And then finally, we're going to add our chili beans and we add it with all of the liquid and everything together. Okay, now the last thing we need to add is the chili powder. So we want nine tablespoons of chili powder and they're not level tablespoons, they're kind of like heaping tablespoons. So we want this to have a lot of chili flavor. Come on. Okay, there's one. This chili powder is kind of compacted. Two. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. A very sloppy nine, but that's okay. Plenty of chili powder. This chili should have some heat to it for sure. Okay, so now we just need to stir this all together. Doesn't that sound lovely? We're just going to keep stirring this and I'm going to turn the burner on to medium so we can start to heat up. And then just pull everything from the bottom to the top. And that is a good bowl of chili, or a good pot of chili. Now, technically, everything in this is cooked. Everything that was in the cans was ready to eat, and the meat has been cooked. So technically, you could eat it at this point. Um, this is being made for tomorrow. So I'm going to cook this, bring it up to a simmer, 
and then I'm going to let it set and all those flavors are going to be combined together and by tomorrow it'll be absolutely delicious. So I will see you back here for the final result and you can see what it looks like after it's cooked. So here is the chili about an hour and a half later. It has been cooked on low. I know that I said earlier that it should simmer, but it should not. You should turn it to low and let it cook on low for the hour and a half to two hours. You do not want it to bubble or boil because that will burn it to the bottom of the pan. Because nothing will ruin a pot of this chili faster than having it burnt on the pan and having little black flecks in your chili. Because that has happened before and it has not been fun. So this is basically ready. I think I may let it cool down and then I'll heat it back up tomorrow before I serve this tomorrow, I will cook a large batch of spaghetti and I will also have grated cheese, onions, and oyster crackers on hand as well as hot sauce. So you will have the spaghetti and then you will put the chili on top of it and then you can top it with either cheese or onions or oyster crackers or hot sauce or all of them together. And I definitely use all of them at the same time and it is amazing dinner fairly easy to make and it feeds a lot of people so I hope this is a great meal idea for you and I hope you're able to make it based on my instructions here so thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel I will be making many more different types of videos like this for you thank you for watching bye